when we first got into Baghdad, I, I rolled into Baghdad um, on my second trip with, with TC in 2004. Um, so I was a project manager, I set up a site, all that. I came back off that rotation and what we realized is a lot of stuff that we did was done in cash. It had to be done in cash. It's just, it's not like you go to freaking banks and stuff there. So um, we would bring money in and instead of hiring couriers, they would have guys like me, former unit guys, and they would give us two laptop bags with a you know, box of cases with a half million dollars in each. And we would fly from Chicago to Baghdad. Damn. And so, and those um, those types of deals. Not to get specific on this one, those types yeah. of deals would range from just buying information. Uh, your anything you got, anything that you got to do. It's a cash economy there, in, in, you know, in, in wartime. Uh, and that that region, a lot of stuff is just cash in general. But it was if we needed vehicles, if we needed anything that we needed, there there was no like we weren't going to transfer funds to them electronically or anything. Everything was done if you bought if you hired people as cooks or to work on vehicles. It was all done cash. Mm. Uh, so they, I get these uh, two um, laptop bags, they're laptop cases, half a million dollars in each. I was flying with one of our logistics guys. Uh, I can't remember his name, and somebody listening if, if they were part of the crew, they'll know. We called him Lego, because he's the guy that got us our Legos. Right? <laughs> um, and uh, I was with Lego's wife. I was, um, I was flying with her. I was kind of escorting her, which is kind of comical, because I'm like, I'm kind of preoccupied with, you know, a million dollars in cash and trying yeah. to get it into a country, through another country, which is, it, it, that's where it gets dicey. So uh, we fly into Jordan. Now, are you happens. flying as civilians at this point? Like, you're literally taking yeah. airports? Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. So we fly into Jordan. You have to stay in Jordan overnight so they can get their airport tax and the usual stuff. So you've you got to leave the airport. You've got to go to Jordan, spend the night there, you know, get a hotel room, all that. So, that, you know, it's, it's for trade and, and such. So I land in Jordan. We leave the airport. And I, I don't know how, like, I walked through customs and they never asked to look at anything, which is kind of kind of cool. Very fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> And so, um, what happens if they do ask you? That's what I was going to ask. I, I, like, I don't know, man. I don't know what the, the Jordanians would do. I, I know that a million dollars in cash. Questionable. Like, just think of it this way: What if you were in Denver in a hotel room and the wrong people knew you had a million dollars in cash? Yeah, I mean, they're going to try to kill you and rob you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're, they're, the try part is kind of a like foregone conclusion. They're going to they're right. have a million dollars and you won't. We know that. I was in I was in Le Meridian with like the like. I didn't even have a fucking folding knife. Wow. I'm, I'm in a hotel room in the Meridian with a million dollars in cash. I'm like, wow, okay. That's, this yeah, is interesting. Yeah, because like, you I can't travel thinking, with any kind of like weapons, obviously. So, no. Yeah. No. You're just so I'm kind sitting of there and I'm like, luck. and I'm supposed to be escorting Lego's wife, which is like, I'm like, okay, great, whatever. I'm, you know, babysitting somebody who's never traveled internationally, I don't think. But uh, so I'm sitting in my room. It's funny because I remember sitting there going, wow. If, if the wrong person knows I have a million dollars, I will not see the sunrise. Like, I'll just disappear from the face of the earth. So you have, like, six people in the office listening to this. You're a hero to everyone in here. You're like, <laughs> to me, the way Chris talks about you, number one, I couldn't wait to meet you. Number two, I can't wait to get you out here. Number three, I admire you a ton. And number four, to me, you're like Jason Bourne. So this, <laughs> Dude, so, this story for me is like... Dude, it's funny because it, I appreciate that, man. It's just... I'm just some freaking Italian kid from New Jersey, dude, that like is creative. Like I can figure shit out because I've had to. But mm. it's like, so I, I, I'm in the hotel, I'm in the Meridian, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm basically screwed. Like I'm going to get jacked if, if the wrong people know. I, I call I call Lego, um, I call his wife, um, and I'm like, hey, listen, can you come down here? Like I need to talk to you for a little bit. And of course, she doesn't know me. She's like, oh yeah, I'm going to come down to your hotel room in Jordan. Like, and like... <laughs> I thought I'm like, no, it's not like, that. Pump Trust the me, yeah, work. pump the brakes, Mike. <laughs> yeah. We got bigger problems. <laughs> she, and she's a, she's a, she's bang hot. So yeah. she comes down. I'm like, listen, here's the deal. I, I have a million dollars in cash, and I have to get it through customs to get it into Baghdad. And she goes, she goes, oh wow, how are you going to do that? And I'm like, <laughs> you mean how are we going to do that? <laughs> because yeah. you're with me, like you're traveling with me, so like I need your help. So I, I basically had her dress really nice so that they would all be preoccupied with her mm. and, and like basically treat me like, just kind of treat me like a bitch. Like, oh, like, you know, treat me like, like a child in front of those guys. And in that culture, they'll just laugh at me and like, look at him. He's a little bitch. He's getting bossed around by some chick. <laughs> and they're going to be looking at her. Wait, that's clever. All... So you're saying have her treat you like shit so they don't yeah. think you're a threat. So, yeah. Mm. Just like to draw them off. Culturally, they'll look at me and go, oh, what a punk. And then they're looking at her going, whoa, look at the, look at the rack on her. Like, you know, it's just, yeah. and then I'm like, hey, you know, all your, put your like, I know you brought like some like cool stuff to, you know, wear for your boy. So just put it on, put it on top. So when they go through the luggage, they're like, oh, Victoria's Secrets. Oh, they're all, they're looking at the hot chick. And I'm like, I'm over here doing nothing. 
it's nothing, nothing going on here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I just, I, I had her draw attention. I just coasted on through. They looked at, at my stuff. I had my, my two laptop cases at my feet, not on the counter with my bag. So they go through my shit. They get done. They pull the bag off. I pick up my cases and walk on the plane. Wow. Were you, so, so like leading up to that, again, with your military background and training, which puts you in the top, obviously, zero, zero, one percent of people in the world, are you already thinking of how to defend and exit, and, and did you already sort of fortify, your, did you have like a sharpened well, pen in yeah, your pocket? You know what I thought? You, you ever been in one of those like, like situations where you're like, wow, man, if this goes bad, I'm screwed. Wow. Like, <laughs> that's all I got. I got, what's your back plan? My back plan is, I hope I'm not screwed too bad. Like, there's not, there wasn't much I could do. I'm a captive audience. I'm in a controlled area. They, they have every benefit. And so it's funny because I, I, I get on the plane. Now I'm waiting for them. First thing I'm doing is like, okay, once they close the door, effectively like by, by like whatever national FAA kind of thing, like I don't know what, what governs, what the governing body is for aircraft. Once the door is closed, the, the flight's departed. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm in another country and I'm like, eh, every once in a while people just go, guess what? We just changed the rules. Bring the plane back. So yeah. I'm like, okay, what if they saw something on video? What if I'm, I'm kind of thinking, man, okay, the door's closed. Block one, we're good so far. And then we start taxing. I'm like, okay, we're taxing. We're still good. I'm sitting there going, okay, it's not cool until we take off. When we take off, I'm like, yes, we're good. So <laughs> Cocktail. Flying. Cocktail. Yeah, oh, totally. Oh, bro. I, was throwing, <laughs> I was throwing them down like they were going to outlaw booze in the morning. So My, um, I got a question for you. So what you got? I, I got two actually. So how close was this to the start of the war? Like post 9-11, right? You're talking, you're saying Baghdad. So that was, was this close to this when we invaded? This is 2004, bro. Okay. This is 2004. Wow. So yeah. not long. We're knee deep in it. And then two, why, why would they send you like that? Why couldn't they just put you on a military plane? Even though you're a private contractor, I still know that they, they work side by side. Why couldn't they just put you two reasons. with an escort? Two reasons that I'll tell you. Two reasons that I can think of. One... Okay, uno, because they're cheap. <laughs> and two, because wow. they knew I could pull it off. They picked wow. guys, they picked us because they knew we could pull it off because we're like, we're the make shit happen guys. We're like, hey man, like the, the, the make, make the impossible possible kind of shit. Like most people are like, oh my God, I can't do that. I was like, okay, so you want me to take this there? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll figure it out. So Yo, like, I would say for anyone listening, that's a perfect point of spot to point out that in life, Figure it out. Yeah, figure it the fuck yeah. out. Oh, There's an yeah. answer to every problem you have, from business to relation, like especially in business. Everyone out there trying to succeed. I see so many people in business who get like a one word answer email or hit a roadblock or someone will tell them it can't be done and they accept that data and stop in their tracks. There's always an yeah. answer. Change, change the framework, right? Like how yeah. do I get it done? Not it can't be done. I, yeah. I fucking love that.